to get it. Good afternoon. I am Specialist Ryan O'Neill from the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and I have the pleasure of serving as your Master of Ceremony today. Welcome to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. On behalf of Joint Base Meyer Commander Colonel Tasha Lowry, welcome to the Baker's Creek Memorial Observance commemorating the 81st anniversary of the air crash in Queensland, Australia, a tragedy that took the lives of 40 Arm Army Air Corps service members during World War II. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the National Anthem and remain standing for the invocation. The National Anthem will be sung by Staff Sergeant Jocelyn Pride, vocalist with the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own. The invocation will be given by Sergeant First Class Sherry Wooten, Senior Religious Affairs NCO. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence at this memorial monument in hope and thanksgiving. We thank you for placing your hand upon the United States of America and Australia. Our countries were founded on the principles of dedication to justice and freedom. We are grateful that we can serve this nation and you. And we thank you for each brave man and woman who has answered the call to defend our countries. We thank each soldier, sailor, airman, and Marine who has served, and especially those who have fought for our country's battles to defend liberty. Among those warriors, Lord, we remember the 40 Army Air Corps service members who lost their lives while flying on a Boeing B-17, missed every morning fixing on June 14, 1943, at Baker's Creek, near McCabe, Queen Island, Australia. Their service and sacrifice exemplified the oath they swore to protect and defend the nation you have given us. As a grateful nation, we pay tribute and honor and remember them. Finally, Lord, wherever a service member patrols, flies, or sails, keep them safe and their family in your care. In your name we pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Pride and Sergeant First Class Wooten. On June 14th, 1943, a U.S. Army Boeing B-17C, serial number 40-2072, known as Miss Every Morning Fixing, took off from Mackay Airfield in Queensland, Australia, just before dawn at about 6 a.m. in foggy conditions. Headed for Port Moresby, New Guinea, with six crew members and 35 passengers on board, it made a low-altitude turn and a few moments later crashed near the small town of Baker's Creek. The cause of the crash remains a mystery a tragedy that took the lives of 40 Army Air Corps service members during World War II. Every year, memorial wreaths are laid at the Baker Creek Monument here on Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall on the anniversary of the crash. 
in tribute to the 40 victims of the Baker Creek tragedy to remember and honor these brave Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the wreath laying. The wreath from Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall and the U.S. Army will be laid by the Joint Base Commander, Colonel Tasha Lowry. The wreath from the Embassy of Australia in Washington, D.C. will be laid by the Honorable Kevin Rudd, Australian Ambassador. They will be assisted by Command Sergeant Major Michael Fisher, Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. Taps will be played by Staff Sergeant Anthony Sadlin, bugler with the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce the commander of Joint Base Meyer, Henderson Hall, Colonel Tasha Lowry. Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. Can you hear me? Just want to make sure. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, Ambassador Kevin Rudd, Chief of Staff, Captain David Turner, Wing Commander Andrew Daly, and to all the distinguished members of the Australian Embassy joining us today, welcome to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall, America's Post. I would also like to welcome those who are viewing this virtually across the United States and overseas. As we do every year, we are gathered today to honor the 40 American soldiers whose lives were lost in an airplane crash at Baker's Creek. The deadly crash happened on June 14, 1943, at the Baker's Creek near Mackay, Queensland, Australia. The soldiers were part of the Army Air Corps who were on the airplane to go on some much-deserved R&R from fighting in the Pacific. Just before dawn, these American patriots boarded their B-17 transport to head back to New Guinea. The plane took off in dense fog and crashed shortly after takeoff. There was only one survivor of the crash, Corporal Foy Kenneth Roberts. This memorial, which was dedicated here on Joint Base in 2009, is a tribute to the 40 lives that were lost. Thank you, Ambassador Rudd, for participating in today's memorial. I would also like to thank the members of Bakers Creek Memorial Association and the Returned and Services League of Australia for joining us each and every year to honor our soldiers. Finally, a special thanks to the families of the soldiers who died at Baker's Creek. We are grateful for your service and yours to our nation. It is our sincere privilege to honor this memory. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Lowry. I am now pleased to introduce the Ambassador of Australia, the Honorable Kevin Rudd. Good afternoon, and thank you for laying on some Australian weather. <laughs> it's hot, um, but it's good to be among friends, partners, and allies as we honor the fallen. 
there's something always moving about reading a plaque such as this. Put in your mind's eye the experience of 40 young American servicemen. In the depths of World War II, when uh, the 5th Air Force, together with other US forces, had retreated to Australia after the Battle of the Philippines. MacArthur had set up his field headquarters in my home city of Brisbane. I'm from Queensland. I'm not from Mackay, but I know the city very well, having visited many times. You think of those 40 young airmen having survived the Philippines and have come to Australia and were among friends, were among their allies, and were grateful to their God and rejoicing with their families that they lived to fight another day. And then fate hit. And those 40 young lives, and when you think of the recruitment ages at the time, 19 year olds, 20 year olds, 21 year olds, 22 year olds, uh, and those lives shattered in an incident, and those of their families forever indelibly marked, it reminds us again of the extraordinary and horrific impact of war. And so this day in June of 2024, we honor each of their memories as we reflect on the dignity of each of their souls. Of course, at a broader level, it reminds us afresh that freedom only exists because we pay a price to defend it. And you, uh, the proud men and women who wear the uniform of the United States and the uniform of the armed forces of the Commonwealth of Australia, you stand on the front line as sentinels in the defense of freedom. As the Australian Ambassador of the United States, I simply pay my deepest thanks and respect to each of you as you've chosen this profession of arms in order to put your lives in the front line in the defense of freedom today. Finally, to those who are members of the Returned and Services League of Australia and those who are American veterans here with us today, can I also, as Australian Ambassador, extend to you my thanks and appreciation for your service. Uh, these are not easy decisions to wear the uniform of your country. These are not easy decisions to put your lives on the line and, in the case of these brave 40, to put those lives on a line in a manner which had terrific and horrific and fatal consequences. So for those of you who are among us who are from our ex-servicemen's community, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We honour their memory today, lest we forget. Thank you, Group Ambassador Rudd. I am now pleased to introduce the President and CEO of the Air and Space Forces Association, retired Lieutenant General Bruce Orville Wright, U.S. Air Force. Well, Ambassador Rudd, um, thank you so much for being here. Colonel Lowry and your team every year put this on uh, in such a perfect, meaningful way. Thanks also to Susan Leroy uh, for her coordination. And there's a retired but never retired Army Sergeant Major here. Enoch, please raise your hand. We've been working on this for a few years and it would not happen without your leadership. Dr. Bob Cutler and my good friend Carl Benson cannot be here today, but knowing their investment of time and heart and leadership over the years, going back to my time as the Fifth Air Force Commander, we cannot thank Colonel Cutler and Call and all those who assisted them that they would give the credit to, not themselves. Thank you for all that you've done. Well, more than 50,000 airmen died during World War II in multiple worldwide operating areas, primarily in the European and Pacific theaters. I'm both humbled and honored today to talk for a few minutes about just two airmen of the 40 who perished at Baker's Creek 81 years ago. They represent the amazing backgrounds of those who served so selflessly 
volunteers and courageously served in the defense of our nations, Australia and the United States. Lieutenant Vern Jimmy Gidcom was not yet 23 years old when he was the assigned pilot for B-17 tail number 40272. Jimmy had married his high school sweetheart, Barbara Ann, about a year earlier. The B-17 that Jimmy piloted was built in 1940 and had served in combat operations since the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor and Clark Air Base in the Philippines in December 41 and was then used for frequent transport flights between New Guinea and Australia, including morale and recreation flights to communities like Mackay, where airmen were able to regain their strength and rest and enjoy the hospitality and encouragement of Australian families as they so missed their own families back in the United States. On 13 June, prior to the, the day prior to the crash, Jimmy had diligently test flown the B-17 after the change out of two, two of its four engines. While very young, Jimmy was one of many pilots in the Army Air Corps at the time who had seen extensive training in multiple U.S. locations and was among, and this is amazing to me, was among more than 300,000 pilots trained in the United States between 1941 and 45. Interestingly, the washout rate was 30%. It was like trying to be an astronaut. And thousands, thousands of B-17 pilots were killed during World War II in both training accidents and combat operations. Staff Sergeant John Hilsheimer had been a member of the 40th Fighter Squadron flying P-39 Air Cobras and P-40 Warhawks for more than a year. John was a highly skilled maintainer and had been deployed to New Guinea bases multiple times in the previous year. In letters to his family, John constantly reiterated his faith and devotion to Almighty God. It is also important to remember that the airmen of World War II operating across austere jungle airstrips in New Guinea were maintaining and effectively employing the most advanced technology in the history of the world at the time. They were experts. They were amazing in their maintenance skills and their engineering skills and they were constantly under fire by the most lethal conventional weapons in the, the world had ever known. Today, as during World War II, combat operations are directly fought and won or lost by a relatively small percentage of our national populations. But ultimately, an entire nation and its allies must be engaged to prevail in wars with declared enemies of our shared sovereign values. An international standard is, and I think will always be, for meaningful and heartfelt national level commitment to an alliance and shared values during World War II, and again, I would offer today, is demonstrated and proven by the alliance between Australia and the United States and the real friendships and collaboration between the Royal Australian Air Force and our U.S. Air Force. As we know right now, both Air Forces are flying the F-35 Lightning, the most modern fighter in the world. But we will always honor the inspirational legacy of our fallen warriors as we do here this afternoon at a gate of Arlington National Cemetery. I remain absolutely confident that we will never be deterred in our commitment to do all possible to reaffirm and strengthen our alliances, and we must do so, like never before, together to again prevail against the daunting worldwide threats to our freedoms that we face today. Thank you so much, and may God continue to bless our airmen and their families. Thank you, Colonel Barrier. I am now pleased to introduce from Bakers Creek Memorial Association board member, retired Colonel Michael Beyer, U.S. Army. Ambassador Rudd, 
Colonel White, Colonel Lowry, friends, family members of the Baker's Creek Fallen. On behalf of those families who are scattered throughout the United States and in other parts of the world, thank you for continuing this tradition. And before I read the names of the fallen, I want to put into context, immediate context, some of the things that happened at that time. There weren't many eyewitnesses to the tragedy, but there was one gentleman who kept a diary. His name was Captain Samuel Cutler. He was the executive officer for the uh, U.S. Army Red Cross Station at the time. And on June 13th, his entry was rather buoyant and, and sprightly, but the next day it changed. And this is what he wrote. May, June 14th, Monday, June 14th, 1943. What a day and a tragic one. Up at 4 a.m. and lined up 35 enlisted and two officers to go on CBA to Moresby for a 6 a.m. takeoff from Mackay Aerodrome. The weather was misty, and one of those things did happen. Yes, at 6.02 a.m., two minutes after I turned my back on the CBA plane, the same one I had seen yesterday, it crashed into some woods five miles away and exploded, killing 40 people with only one saved. Biggest air crash in American air transport history to date. Pilot error and poor visibility. As officer of the day, I put the men on the ship and so had a direct part in sealing their fate. Also, I was at the scene of the crash and saw the mangled bodies killed while flying at 200 miles an hour. Terrible. Now please rise as I read the names of the fallen. Those soldiers lost on June 14, 1943. Private First Class Jerome Abraham, Captain John O. Berthold, Technician Fifth Class William A. Briggs, Sergeant Dean H. Bussey, Technical Sergeant James A. Copeland, Sergeant Carl A. Cunningham, Staff Sergeant Lavelle Dale Curtis, Technician Fifth Class George A. Airman, Flight Officer William C. Erb, Private James E. Finney, Sergeant Leo E. Fletcher, Technical Sergeant Alfred H. Frezza, First Lieutenant Vern J. Gitcom, Jr., Private First Class Norman J. Getz, Staff Sergeant Roy A. Hatlin, Staff Sergeant John W. Hilsheimer, Private First Class Vernon Johnson, Sergeant Donald B. Kuiper, Staff Sergeant Charlie O. LaRue, Private Raymond D. Longabaugh, Private First Class Kenneth W. Mann, Corporal Marlon D. Metzger, Private Charles D. Montgomery, Second Lieutenant Jack A. Ogren, Private First Class John W. Parker, Private First Class Frank S. Penska, Major George N. Powell, Sergeant Anthony Rudnick, Corporal Charles W. Sampson, Private First Class Arnold Seidel, Corporal Jacob O. Skaggs, Jr., Corporal Franklin F. Smith, Corporal Raymond H. Smith, Private First Class Frederick C. Sweet, Corporal Edward Tenney, Sergeant David H. Tylston, Private First Class Dale Von Fossen, Private Reuben L. Vaughn, Staff Sergeant Frank E. Welcho, Private First Class Charles M. Williams. And now allow me to place flowers of remembrance.
Thank you, Colonel Byer. Please be seated. We annually close our ceremony with the reading of the Ode of Remembrance, an Australian tradition where the verse is read at commemorational services held to honor the fallen and wartime experiences of service men and women. The Ode has annually been read at our Bakers Creek Observance by a representative from Mackay Queensley Branch of the Returned and Service League of Australia. This year's Ode will be read by Major Mark Montang, Australian Army and Vice President of the Washington Sub-Branch of the Australians Returned and Service League. For the benefits of those in the audience who may not be aware, as Major Montang recites the last lines of the ode, when he says, we shall remember them, please respond with, lest we forget. Major Montang. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch until the end against odds uncounted. They shall not, correction, they fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. Thank you, Major Montang. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you for your attendance.